Well, hello and welcome to another show of Essence of Emerald. And guess what? I'm Emerald Lagasse. That's right, usually a man with a mission. But today, I'm going to tackle the question that caused more arguments in New Orleans, I should say Louisiana, uh, than just about anything. And that's, what's Creole and what's Cajun? You know, it really amazes me after particularly the Cajun craze for now nearly almost, what, 15 years? Influenced a lot by Paul Prudhomme and the popularity of Cajun cooking. My good friend Paul Prudhomme, I should say. And there is still, as I travel, uh, a lot of confusion, uh, or really what the knowledge is and the difference between Creole and Cajun food. Well, I'm going to try to explain that to you today and give you a little bit of spice that we have in Louisiana. In Louisiana, uh, you have the city, which uh, is New Orleans. In New Orleans, literally the food has been unchanged for over 200 years. And the influences of the city, which is a large port city, which means that in the old days, a lot of activity in the port caused it to change. That's right. And the influences of that and the foundation of that tradition is based on the French and the Spanish and black African cultures. That's right. Now, that city version of cooking is what is called Creole cooking. Now, in the country of Louisiana, you have the Acadians who settled in the late 1700s and farming and fishing and hunting, which is why the state's name is called Sportsman's Paradise, that living and eating off the land in that form of pot cooking, if you will, is called Cajun cooking. So you have Creole and Cajun, the cuisines, the makeup of the great state of Louisiana. Now, I know you watch a lot of Essence of Emerald, and you're probably wondering, hey, what's that spice? Well, let's talk about spice for a minute, because also in popularity of Creole and Cajun cuisine, as you know, around the country, it amazes me to see how many blends are for sale out there of Cajun spice or Creole spice. And it also amazes me the popularity recently of all the hot sauces. I mean, they've got stores that only sell hot sauces these days and nothing but. Well, I can tell you first about spice. And that is, is that spice has been a part of the flavor and taste of Louisiana cooking. And people ask me, is Creole hotter than Cajun or is Cajun hotter than Creole? And I sort of chuckle because it's really based on the cook itself. Everybody has a little bit of different style or a little bit of different pots. Meaning, everybody puts something different in the pot. If you have 10 recipes cooked by 10 different cooks, you're gonna have 10 different dishes. And same thing with spice in Louisiana. There are so many spices. Everybody has their own spice. The kitchens have their own spice. Restaurants have their own blends that they use. The basis of those spices are right here, paprika. That's what really gives it the color of the spice. And then is salt. And mostly it's a, just a basic grind of salt. Black pepper. Everything is seasoned. Now, what's optional is thyme. You'll find a lot more thyme used in cooking, in Creole cooking, than you will in the Cajun cooking. In garlic and garlic powder, also oregano. And you have a lot more oregano used in Creole cooking than you would in Cajun cooking. And then there's cayenne pepper. That's the spice, the pepper, the heat. White pepper generally, as well as onion powder. And even though that these spices, which make the spice blend, I had to show you this right here because it's a very unique ingredient in Louisiana cooking, and that's filet gumbo. 
So excluding the filet gumbo, these spices make a spice blend or a Creole or Cajun or Louisiana spice. Another Louisiana ingredient, my great friends up there in Avery Island, the Macalenis, been making Tabasco sauce for a long time. And what people don't realize is that Tabasco is a licensed pepper. There is just a particular Tabasco pepper. That's right. Whereas a lot of hot sauces that are made in Louisiana are made from various types of cayenne peppers. And some of the hot sauces that you have, I've got one here that I wanted to show you. And I have this one that I wanted to show you as well. You see, that's a little thicker than this one here. And then there's this one, which is a little thinner. Every hot sauce is different. But the components of hot sauce are chili peppers and vinegar and sometimes salt. Those are the different three examples of three different Louisiana hot sauces, all coming from Louisiana, but different styles. Some have more vinegar. Some have a more puree of pepper. Some have more salt than others. And now, even these days, you can find a green hot sauce, which is basically a jalapeno pepper hot sauce. And let me tell you something. Talking about heat and talking about spice, after the break, I'm going to come back and show you a classic example of Cajun cooking. So stay with me on The Essence of Emerald. Hey, welcome back. We're going to make some Cajun food right now. Yeah, that's where we're going to be doing something Cajun as they come. Not Creole, but Cajun. Well, pot cooking, one pot. The best example that I could show you, beside how delicious it is, and you know what? I'm getting a little hungry, so I wanted to cook it so that I could eat something delicious. Look, look at this pot. What you're going to see before your very eyes, you're not going to believe this Cajun dish, jambalaya. What we're going to do is, I've got a little oil that we're going to start in this pot. First, you need a pot. That's what they tell me. If we're making gumbo, it would be first you need to make a roux. But no, we're making jambalaya, so first you need to have a pot. Now, look at all the other staples of Louisiana, as we talked about in the beginning segment of the show, andouille sausage. It's a spiced pork smoked sausage. And there are things like tasso that comes to mind, which is a Cajun spiced ham. Rice. We grow a lot of rice in Louisiana. All those crawfish ponds get flooded in the spring, early summer, and then we grow rice. And what about those beautiful shrimp, those Louisiana, those Gulf shrimp, those white shrimp? And then, you might have heard the expression of Trinity, the Holy Trinity. Hey, you're getting deep down there. Well, let me tell you what that is. Trinity, the Holy Trinity, celery, bell pepper, and as they say down there, some onion. You gotta have onion. You just can't have no bell pepper and celery without the onion. Now, bay leaf. We're fortunate to have a lot of laurel trees that grow. But when you got all those ingredients, you can make some jambalaya quite simply. Now watch. I've got some chicken, and I'm going to add a little bit of spice to this chicken so that that chicken tastes good. And then we're going to add the chicken in a pot because we want to start browning that chicken. And after we stop browning that chicken a little bit, watch how simple this is. Hey, and if you got the bones and the skin and all that stuff, and beautiful. And if you don't have any chicken, you can put a duck in there, and you can have a duck jambalaya. Or you can put one of them turkeys in there, and you can have a turkey jambalaya. And if that lady next door gets crazy with you, put her in the pot and make her into jambalaya. Now, I'm going to take our andouille that I've cut up, and then what I'm going to do is add the trinity. Now, I got it in big pieces because I got big pieces of meat in here. The celery and the bell pepper. 
and the onion. You see, we're not talking about anything difficult here now. We're talking about basic Louisiana ingredients. Now, there's some argument about jambalaya in Louisiana, and it's an argument between the city version and the country version. Because, you know, most of the jambalayas that I see in Cajun country, they don't have tomato. And they don't think you should put tomato in jambalaya. But in the city, in New Orleans, well, they put tomato just about in everything. So, what they do use is some salt. Salt it up really good. And then they use this stuff right here for heat. And that's that cayenne pepper. Now, in most Cajun dishes or Cajun-style cooking, it's amazing to me how the Trinity, with or without garlic, salt and cayenne, can taste different in 10 different things using the same ingredients. But I'll tell you, them, them people know how to cook. Now, once we get that browned up, we're going to add our rice in there. And we're going to cook our rice for about one or two minutes. And then what we're going to do, once we add our rice, for about a minute or two, is then we're going to add some chopped garlic. And the reason for that is because we don't... Uh, we don't want to brown that garlic too, too brown and it gets bitter. Then it'll make that jambalaya be bitter. Some good old hot sauce. That's right, and I don't mean a drop or two either. And another ingredient used in a lot of more Creole cooking than Cajun is Worcestershire sauce. That's right, Worcestershire sauce. Now, once we cook that rice for a minute or two, I want to grab my bay leaves and I'm gonna add some stock or some water. And I'm also gonna cut the heat down a little bit. You see that amber color right there? That's kind of an amber color. It's not red, it's an amber color. And that's the color that the Cajun people believe, or them Louisiana in the, in the country, that's what they really believe. It should be that amber color. But put the shrimp on top because they're gonna cook quick. They're gonna cook last and the juice is gonna go right inside of that. And we're gonna cook that for about 25, 30 minutes. Woo! And boy, when, that, when that's finished cooking, it's gonna look something like that right there. And then you got some jambalaya with your friends. You have a, you'll have a whole block party. Now, you just spoon up some jambalaya. See that nice amber color that I was talking about? And then if you want to add some of that, that spice, or if you want to add whatever, well, you just eat it up like I'm going to do. And when we come back, I'm going to show you something really, really Creole. So don't go away. Stay with me on the Essence of Emerald. I had to give you a little taste of that Cajun music, too. How about that? Oh, I'm so excited. Woo! Now, Creole, the city. Let's make some shrimp Creole, one of the simplest, oldest dishes. We're going to start with some butter. And now that you know what Trinity is, that's what we're going to start with. Some bell pepper, some celery, and some onion. Just like that. Simple ingredients. You see that? That's what we're going to start with. We want to cook these vegetables down. Really cook them down. Get the flavor out of that. And you say to yourself, well, what about seasoning? Well, I'm going to show you how simple it is. Remember we talked about salt and cayenne? This is a prime example. There's a little salt. And there's a little cayenne. Now, people are afraid of this stuff, but you've got to know how to cook with it. And you're going to know how to cook Creole and Cajun after the essence of emerald today. Yes, indeed. 
All right. So we cook that up. Now, after we cook this for about six or eight minutes and really get those vegetables tender, what we're going to do is we're going to add some, some garlic and we're going to add some fresh tomato. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, you've heard me talk before about, well, as Creole tomatoes, they only come out in the short season in the spring, and they are delicious. A typical Creole tomato every year. Woo. Now, you've heard me talk about tomatoes a bunch of times. Look, this is just some one tomato that I peeled and pureed. Now, you don't have to go and have this whole array in your, your cupboard with all this tomato product stuff all over the place. I just peeled one tomato, put it in my little processor, pureed it up. That's what that is right there. And I'm just going to add that in there. <coughs> now, what I've been telling you a lot of times is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of theory and a lot of debate in Louisiana about when you're cooking tomato, whether it's sauce piquant or whether it's Creole sauce, we have the ingredients in there of what Creole sauce is. But now it's the technique, and you see it happening right here for that perfect Creole sauce. And you may say, what is sauce piquant? Sauce piquant? Well, that's probably sauce piquant right there. I mean, sauce piquant has the same ingredients, except piquant means to burn, to the mouth, pepper. So we would have some more types of pepper or more cayenne in there. That's what it means, piquant, sauce piquant. But the ingredients for this in Creole sauce are basically the same. And this technique that I was telling you about cooking that acid out of those tomatoes, you want to make sure that what it's going to do is form this little raft. It's going to form this little raft up there. Now, when that happens, and you'll see it happen, it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even a little longer if those tomatoes weren't quite ripe. And you're going to get this little bubbly effect as it's happening right now. And when that happens, I'm going to add a couple of bay leaves. That's right. I'm going to add a couple of bay leaves. And then I'm going to add some stock. I've got a little bit of shrimp stock here that I'm going to add. And we're going to let that simmer up. You see that? We're going to let that simmer up. We can always come back and add a little more. And this is the start of our Creole sauce. That's right, the start of our Creole sauce. Woo! Now, three ingredients are missing. Beside, well, maybe four ingredients. Maybe I fibbed a little. Now, they don't believe until the very end that they use a lot of parsley. I love parsley, but a lot of people, they start, they put that parsley in the beginning there. And even the Portuguese people, like when my mom cooks, when she cooks with a lot of parsley and tomatoes, she usually waits uh, till about halfway before she starts adding her parsley. Well, I can tell you, mostly in New Orleans and in particularly Louisiana by the bayous, you don't add that parsley until the very end, because that's when you want to get the flavor. Now, we're making shrimp creole. As this starts simmering, like I said, for about 15, 20 minutes, we're going to take some of those beautiful shrimp, and we're going to put them in there. And we're going to start making our shrimp creole, just like that. Nice and firm. And we're going to make our shrimp creole. Now. The shrimp, after we did that process, that uh, process of about 15, 20 minutes where we simmer that, and the sauce is about ready. And now when we add, we're going to add it. We're going to cover it up just a minute. We're going to cover it up and let it get good and hot. You know, and there's a thing about covering up sauces when you're making uh, particular sauces. If you don't cover it, it evaporates. The moisture evaporates, and it gets all nice and thick. 
Now you might say to yourself, what do you, um, what do you cook? What do you serve with uh, shrimp creole? Well, I tell you one of the things that's most popular down there is rice. So one of the biggest ingredients is serving some, just some nice flavored steamed rice with shrimp creole. And then you put your shrimp on that shrimp creole and that's when, right at the very end, you add that parsley. Thank you for joining me today. See ya.